putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Greetings and salutations. You are tuning in again to the disgruntled millennial portion of the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. My name is Brett Siegel, the disgruntled millennial. Of course, there are a lot of us. I don't have a monopoly on being disgruntled, but that's just the name that I chose, the disgruntled millennial. You can get me at Shaq General on Twitter. You can get me on Facebook at the disgruntled millennial or the disgruntled millennial too. We are always playing cat and mouse with Mark Zuckerberg because we are a conservative site and we say conservative things. And some people don't like that. They hate us. They want us to go away. But we are not going anywhere because this is this is what freedom does. Freedom wants to be free. People want to be free. We were talking a little bit about feminism and how it's bad for women and how even feminists, even feminists, even the most hardcore of feminists has to acknowledge that there's differences between men and women. Anatomical differences, universal differences. If you ever wonder why feminists tend to be so angry and unhappy, that's why. That is a part of the cognitive dissonance that comes along with denying reality. Take sex, for example. Even when the woman is on top, the man is still the penetrator, right? He is the thirsty wanderer standing at the gates of the metropolis, hoping to get inside. And it's up to the women. Men have this innate desire to procreate. Women have it too, but it's different. It's different than a man's desire to procreate. A woman wants to know her offspring will be cared for. Men want to care for the offspring. You see? No matter how much they try to convince themselves, women have an innate knowledge of the scarcity of their eggs and the abundance of sperm. They know that they have their pick of available men. That a man can't just come into the room and say, okay, now you belong to me. Why? Because this is the West. Because this is America. Not because men wouldn't be, wouldn't be awful and terrible if left to their own devices, untamed and, and, and unshackled by social mores, by Western social mores that uphold women and protect women. I think women innately know that men have a certain nature, but that we are tameable, that we are able to be domesticated. And sex is the leverage that God gave to women to use to tame and domesticate men. And I use those verbs, tame and domesticate purposefully. Men don't need to domesticate women. Women sort of come pre-domesticated. You literally have to brainwash the femininity out of women. But men, they have to learn to be men. Boys don't come pre-domesticated. And that's why you have this toxic masculinity out there because women have given up on the need to domesticate men. They've given up on the need to hold men accountable. Because in their effort to allegedly promote equality, they've actually tipped the scale a little bit towards men. Now men can just get sex whenever they want. So why should, should a man devote all the resources that it takes to start a family? See, I won't choose to go my own way, but I understand that there are a lot of men out there who just want to go their own way. These weaponized women out there who just criticize and and pick and peck and peck at men. It's almost not worth it to try and go date someone. Because if you look at a woman cross-eyed, she'll she'll accuse you of sexual harassment. If she regrets a sexual encounter later on nowadays, she can cry rape. It's too risky. I'm not saying women don't have sex drive. Of course women have sex drive. I'm sure women want sex just as much as men do. But pretending as though the stakes aren't greater for women in any sexual encounter is obtuse. Anything could go wrong for the woman. In any given sexual encounter between a man and a woman, a woman takes most of the risks, right? They're more likely to get pregnant. STDs are more easily passed to women. And of course, no one wants to talk about the emotional differences between men and women and their respective approaches to sex. Women deep down in their DNA know that promiscuity is not great for the spirit. They know that abortion has detrimental health risks. But they support it anyway. So they can even the playing field. Why would you want to even the playing field? Men take out the trash. You don't want to take out the trash. Let let there be a little bit of imbalance. 
You know, uh, there were a lot of women who came out in the first wave of feminism when women were just trying to get the right to vote, to vote, when the suffragettes were doing their thing. There were a lot of women who came out and said, no, we don't want to go to war. We don't want to pay the taxes. We don't want to get jobs. We don't want all that responsibility. That's not what we want. There were a lot of women who opposed the suffragettes. Now, I don't think we should go back to that, but I do think that there are, that there should be certain guidelines for for whether or not you can vote, right? Like, take for, take for example, if you are taking government cheese, you shouldn't have the right to vote on that. Because who is going to vote their government cheese away? Who is going to vote their welfare away? Who is going to vote their free health care away? There was something to be said about owning land and owning property and actually having some skin in the game. If you are going to go out there and vote. Now, I'm, I'm extremely glad women have the right to vote. I'm extremely glad that nowadays it is almost virtually impossible to claim institutional sexism. This toxic masculinity that you all chortle about, that you feminists chortle about, is a societal structure put in place to protect women, not to subjugate them. The exact opposite of to subjugate, uh, to subjugate them. It's to place them on a pedestal, to value them, to protect the eggs from would-be rapists, from bad men, from other bad men. No, women are not brood mares. And conversely, men are not glorified bars of gold. Men are not glorified resources. I contend that if women actually got the equality that they were looking for, they wouldn't be happier. They would be less happy. It's because feminism illustrates a deep and hostile misconception about what it means to be a woman. They think that being a woman is all about waging war on men. Men and women don't have to be the same. Men and women are complementary. Whether you believe that God made it that way or evolution made it that way, men, the fact remains that men and women are complementary beings, and they don't have to be at war with one another. And ironically, before feminism, women actually stood together to temper and tamp down and tone down the male libido. Now you got Tinder, you could just swipe right and swipe left. I swear, men love this stuff. Men, toxic men, toxic masculinity, they love this stuff. They love feminism because they get free sex with no strings attached. Of course you're going to have all these virtue signaling, virtue signaling men out there going, yeah, you're not a real, you're not a real man unless you're a feminist. Feminism has made getting laid so easy. Feminism has made meaningless sex so easy. Feminism has made it so easy for a toxic man to just have sex with a woman and just disregard her, like throw her out like the next day's trash. And if she doesn't want to do it, if she doesn't want to have sex, well, guess what? There's a feminist right around the corner who will. And I'm not really claiming any virtue in this regard. I grew up, I'm a millennial, I grew up in this society. I grew up in a, in, in, in a, my human growth and development class didn't even teach abstinence as an option. Because it's too unrealistic. Because teenagers, they've got their, their libidos and their hormones raging. It's just improbable. It's unrealistic to think that kids just won't have sex. You know what? Maybe for some people it is. But if you don't teach that as an option, people aren't going to think that it's an option. No, my community was extremely cavalier about sex. And guess when I lost my virginity? I lost my virginity at 14 years old. I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't even know what happened. I had sex and I didn't even know that it had happened until right afterwards. I, I almost wish I had waited. I do wish I had waited. It was careless. It was reckless. And when I was in school, you didn't even have all this stuff that you have today, the, the transgender movement where, 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 now, where now human growth and development books are being rewritten to, to, to acknowledge that men can be women and women can be men, confusing these young kids, confusing these children. You know, they're trying to teach little kids in elementary school about transgenderism. I truly feel bad for normal, regular people, men and women who just want to date in 2018 who just want to get together, who just want to have a family and have kids. You've got people coming at you from all directions saying, well, families are bad for Western civilization. You don't, if you don't want to kiss a man, then you're, then you're not really a man. If you, if, you don't want, if you don't want to have sex with someone of the same sex as you, as you then you're a bigot and you are racist and you are hateful. And it's this, this maze, this Rube Goldberg machine of just all kinds of different, different bromides and tropes that you have to wade through in order to just get a date. 
If you're a young man out there, a young man or a young woman, and you just want to live an, a normal life without being told that you're a bigot, racist, sexist, homophobe every 10 minutes, please send me an email. I want to know what's going on. I want to know what's going on on the ground. And I want you to know that there are people out there who support you, that there are people out there who want to stand up for freedom, rationality, and reality above all. Email me, shackgeneral at yahoo.com. Or get me on Twitter at Shaq General. This is Brett Siegel, the disgruntled millennial. I hope you have a wonderful weekend filled with liberal tears and lots and lots and lots of kofefe. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.